so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I, what an honor. Good afternoon, everybody. This is such an honor and so much fun for me, and congratulations, Chancellor Manukin, and thank you for becoming a part of this community, and thank you, yes, for throwing this week-long party. Um, what a great excuse to celebrate this amazing campus. I mean, to be honest, most mornings I wake up and I have to pinch myself that this is my job, that I get to be a faculty member here at this great university, and I get to spend so much time researching and thinking and teaching about American politics. Yeah, you should laugh, right? <laughs> it's not the most uplifting topic. It's not a, much of an uplifting topic these days, but I do love my job, and it actually gives me a tremendous amount of hope. So I uh, study what we call American political behavior, which is basically the way so-called ordinary people think and act about politics. And I start from a pretty basic premise about democracy, which is, in democracy, we're in a form of government in which the decisions that we all make affect the lives of each other. And it's a big responsibility, right? Um, because uh, we can do a tremendous amount of damage to each other or not. And um, it requires, having a system of government like that requires some special things. It requires institutions that prevent us from trampling on each other, right? Things that are in place so that the majority rule doesn't trample on minority rights. So it requires certain kind of institutions but it also requires a kind of sensibility among those of us in the public. It requires us to see each other as human beings and not forget to see the humanity in each other. And I think it's when humans have forgotten this that we've done the most horrible things to each other, um, the most horrific forms of racism, for example, or genocide. And in the United States today, um, we are at a time of some pretty precarious polarization. So just take partisan divisions, for example. We're in a time in which our partisan divisions are not just um, of the nature that we see people on the other side as political opponents, but we see them as moral enemies, right? We see them as evil. We're reluctant to have our kids marry people of a different political stripe. Um, it's, a, it's a dangerous time for us to be in. So what cuts through this? What do we do about it? What prevents us from demonizing people on the other side? What reminds us and enables us to make sure that we continue or, or achieve the, the state of seeing each other as human beings? For me, it's listening. The thing that I try to do in my own personal life and in my work to try to get us all to this place where we are seeing each other as human beings is to incorporate listening into my work. And I get to have this job where in my research and in my teaching, I get to bring in an ethic of listening. So as a scholar of political behavior, I'm able to do this in several ways, and I want to thank Chancellor Manukin for pointing this out to me recently, that in my research, I get to bring in listening by the way I do my work. So I study public opinion as part of my work studying political behavior. And typically, when we study public opinion, we use mass sample survey polls. But I've found over the course of my career that if I want to better understand where people are coming from, how they see the world, their connections to each other and to their governments, I need to spend time with them, listening. Ideally, on their own turf, listening to the way they understand things in their own words. And if you've heard of me before, it's probably because of a book I wrote about Wisconsin in which I invited myself into the conversations of many people around this state to try to understand um, what was going on in our state politically. So I'm able to use listening in my research as a tool, and I'm also able to study uh, how people listen to each other or not, and I help uh, create things that enable us all to hear one another. So since the 2016 presidential campaign, I've been collaborating with a lab at MIT, the Center for Constructive Communication, and an associated nonprofit to create this kind of human tech listening platform 
um, that many people actually right here in Madison, many volunteers helped get off the ground and some extraordinary staff members from the Madison community as well. And what this does is bring small groups of people together to enable them to talk with one another about their hopes and dreams and their concerns and then to lift up those voices to public officials, to journalists and to other community members. So it's a platform to enable people to be heard and to listen to one another. And I'm happy to say very recently, over this past summer, I was able to engage a group of amazing UW undergrads in doing listening work for a commission that I'm co-chairing for the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. They convened their own small groups of people, young adults, in conversations about um, how they're experiencing the economy so that this commission can recommend practices and policies that will enable more people in the country to thrive. So I get to bring in an ethic of listening to my research, but I also get to bring it into my teaching. And actually, if you don't believe me about what I'm about to tell you about my teaching, you can ask a bunch of my students who have joined us here today. And, um, Poli Sci 515, it's just great to see you all, so thank you for joining us. But in my teaching, I get to use listening as a way to create a, a classroom environment in which the students teach me and teach each other and learn the course material more deeply. So we are very fortunate on this campus to have this program through our School of Education called the Discussion Project that has taught me and many other instructors across the campus how to incorporate small group discussions in our classrooms so that the voices of all students can be a part of the mix, they can learn from each other, they can teach us, and they can learn the course material more deeply. deeply. So I get to live this ethic of listening in my work and in my teaching, and I get to see people talking with each other in a respectful manner, making sense of the world, my students, people in the public, and it's those experiences that really give me hope. So I'm not kidding when I say I love my job studying American politics because of the fact that I get to see people doing the thing that more of our leaders, perhaps, need to learn how to do, which is this having conversations about issues they care about in a way that's respectful and dignified, taking the time to reflect on what each other has said and then, and then learn from it. So it's those things that make me so proud to be a part of this community, this campus community, and um, that give me so much hope and joy. And they're also a reminder to me that we can teach each other to exercise this muscle of listening to one another, to remind ourselves of the basic humanity um, of each other. So it's a pleasure to be with you all today, and thank you. And I am excited to hear from the others as well. <laughs> <laughs>